SpongeBob is one of the most iconic and beloved characters of all time. Just look at that face! Not so much that face. When I was a kid, my whole life revolved around Spongebob. I was watching Spongebob on TV while eating my Spongebob cereal and wearing my Spongebob underwear. Forget I said that, please. So what better way to immerse myself more in the world of Spongebob than checking out Spongebob video games? Which is exactly what we're gonna do today. Everything from handheld games, console games, to weird friggin' games, bootlegs, flash games, anything I can get my hands on that seems interesting. But first... Hey, do you want to protect your devices from hackers, advertisers, and even the government? Then today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, is for you. With the best deal on the VPN market at just $1.83 per month, you can do all kinds of things, like unlock your favorite content from all over the world. Is your favorite show on Netflix not available in your region? Well, with the power of Atlas VPN, there it is. Get the best deals while shopping online with airlines and hotels. Yeah, take that, airlines, that's what you get for serving bland peanuts. I personally like the protection Atlas VPN provides, being able to block all malicious links, links, ads, and trackers, and notifying you when someone is trying to steal your data. And if you click that link down below right now, Atlas VPN is running a summer deal for just $1.83 per month, plus three extra months. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, plus availability on unlimited devices, you got nothing to lose. So come on, what are you waiting for? This is a limited time offer. That link again is down in the description for the best online security for just $1.83 per month, plus three extra months, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Let's start off with the first ever Spongebob game, released on the Game Boy Color. Spongebob Squarepants, Legend of the Lost Spatula. And hey, look at that! The title screen has a fun Game Boy remix of the Spongebob theme. Nice touch! Welcome to Bikini Bottom! Thank you. So Spongebob is wandering around and discovers this old statue of a caveman standing on a stove, you know, as you do. So Spongebob assumes Mr. Krabs would know what this statue is. So he rushes to the Krusty Krab to tell this crustaceous cheapskate about his discovery and... Yeah, it turns out he knows all about it. The statue marks the entrance to the underworld. <laughs> Although Spongebob doesn't look too concerned. Yeah, he's seen worse. Remember this scene? Okay, it's on my foot! <laughs> However, in the underworld, you can also find the golden spatula that Mr. Krab says is worth a lot of money. Hello, I like money. So it's our job to go on this fetch quest and find it. Oh boy, can't wait. Press up to talk to friends. Hi, Squidward. Oh, it's you. Well, that seems about right. So as I mentioned earlier, this game is just a really big fetch quest. Traveling all over Bikini Bottom and talking to people in order to gain items and whatnot. Talk to Pearl and get an item. Speak to Mermaid Man for information. Talk to this guy and sell him chocolate. CHOCOLATE! All that good stuff. Traveling around Bikini Bottom is really fun. Getting to see all the sights and buildings from the show. Apart from that, though, the game is kinda bland. You're going to spend a lot of time talking to everyone for information, remembering that information, and platforming through levels. Which would be fine if the jumping wasn't so stiff and awkward. And since that's about 90% of the game, it becomes an issue. But hey, it's not about winning, it's about having fun! F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. But this game's not fun either. It's kind of repetitive and simple, which does make sense. The game came out in 2001, meaning the show was only two years old. So the only people who were gonna play this were kids. It's not like today where you could release a SpongeBob game and 20 year old me is gonna be like, wow, I need that. As a kid though, I could never beat it because I'm a barnacle head. It was hard. Speaking of hard, here's SpongeBob when you die. Now that's just inappropriate. Now here's a game I can't believe I'm going to talk about. It's on Leapster, yeah, you know! That game console for four to ten year olds. Yeah, that sounds about right. So here, SpongeBob saves the day. I already fear for my life. Ah, another beautiful day at the Kitty Bottom. It's an educational game, of course. The story is about this trash boat that pollutes the ocean. A refrigerator accidentally falls in, and the residents of Bikini Bottom flock to it, thinking there's a new restaurant in town. What are you, dumb? I'm ruined! 
and this worries Mr. Krabs greatly. But before we continue, let's just look at this. Less than two minutes into the game, and kids have been taught that when Shrash falls into the ocean, the fish like it. Maybe not the best lesson to start with. Apart from that though, I gotta say, the animation and voiceover work is really well done and solid. It feels like you're actually playing an episode of the show. I mean, for a four-year-old of course, which <laughs> was the demographic. Anyway, Mr. Krabs calls you up saying he's got some brand new ideas to win back the customers' hearts. The first idea is a claw game, which coincidentally is our first game slash challenge. Wow! That's spongy! Um, what is it? It's a claw game, Spongebob! You can't tell me you've never seen one before! Also, please never refer to anything as spongy ever again. Spongebob wants to use coins worth 10 cents each. Which hand should he pick? So, which hand has 10 cents in it? This is too much pressure. So yeah, again, the game is meant for kids. Basic counting and math. Yeah, yeah, I can do it! 10 dimes makes a dollar, right? SpongeBob wants to use coins worth 25 cents. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of something funnier than 24. Just... 25! <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much the game. Look at numbers and count. You do get to play the claw game to give the illusion of fun gameplay, but you don't have to be accurate at all. The next game has SpongeBob and Patrick making Krabby Patties on a conveyor belt. So, I guess the second lesson of the game is that fast food is never fresh. Always frozen. The gameplay itself is a Frogger clone. You need to collect certain ingredients and Patrick jumps around grabbing them. Pretty simple. You're the boss of the secret sauce! That was creepy. The next game is a music game. Pick an instrument and go crazy. You got bongos, drums, xylophones... But, uh... Where's the mayonnaise? Mayonnaise is not an instrument. What?! Well, what about... Horseradish is not an instrument either. God, I hate this game and its lies! Oh, but now it's time for the good stuff. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. To be blunt, this game is absolutely amazing. At one point in my life, this game was my favorite game of all time. More than Mario, more than Pokemon, Battle for Bikini Bottom was my life. So the story of this game is that Plankton has created a robot-making machine in hopes to take over the world, and most importantly, get the Krabby Patty secret formula. Unfortunately, the robots malfunction, and Judgment Day is slowly but surely coming upon Bikini Bottom. Cut to SpongeBob and Patrick playing with toys. Another perfect day playing robots and racehorses. And just like that, SpongeBob realizes he has to save the day. So the game starts off in SpongeBob's house, which for any fan of the show is a real treat. Like, wow, we actually get to explore the full layout of SpongeBob's home. We've always seen bits and pieces throughout the show, but never how they're connected. The home also acts as a tutorial, teaching you the basics of the game. So there's a lot of incentive to want to explore the house. Once you finish the tutorial, you're rewarded with a golden spatula. Here we go! Cool! So we exit the home, and that wonderful French narrator shows up. Ah, uh, there's nothing like the sounds of your own neighborhood. And whoa, what's this? We have options? Yeah, in this game, we explore all of Bikini Bottom. It's such a treat. However, right now, we only have access to jellyfish fields. That's fine, let's go! Ah, uh, the rolling green hills of jellyfish fields. A place to experience nature at its most raw. This makes me so happy. The game is an action-adventure platformer. Now, there's plenty of those games that exist, even in the early 2000s. So, what makes this game so special? Well, personally, I believe it's because it's one of the best 
and last collectathon games done right. Yeah, we can compare this game to Super Mario 64. We have access to many worlds and stages, and within those stages, there will be multiple missions to gain golden spatulas. In order to access the other stages, you need a certain amount of spatulas. These range from anywhere from helping out Squidward, Mrs. Puff, Bubble Buddy, or whoever else happens to be in the stage. I mean, look at the first level. It's very comparable to bob on Battlefield. We have a fairly laid-back, open field stage with bright visuals and upbeat music. We then have to scale a mountain to fight a giant boss. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Heck, there's even these slide stages where you go down a hill and do some sick moves to collect items. SpongeBob controls perfectly, his jumps are accurate, his attacks are solid, and you always feel like you're in complete control. He also has loads of inventive bubble attacks that eventually become necessary to beat the game. However, if you get bored of playing as SpongeBob, you can play as other characters. Yeah, how cool is that? You can take control of Patrick, whose gameplay revolves around strength and power, he can pick up barrels and hit people with his belly, and he feels just as solid as SpongeBob. And lastly, there's Sandy. Again, she's just as good, but she has this lasso, and she can helicopter with it, making platforming much easier. She reminds me of Dixie Kong. Well, hi! Honestly, this game is every SpongeBob fan's dream, and genuinely feels like you're playing an episode of the show. SpongeBob has been on the air for just about 20 years, and doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Yes. I'm sorry, Plankton, but what exactly are you looking at? A magazine with Sandy on the cover? What? Whoa, okay. Do you mind sharing with the rest of the class? I regret asking. SpongeBob SquarePants Operation Krabby Patty is a game released on the PC back in 2001. Now before even starting the game, you're given the option of choosing two different stories, the right side and the wrong side. Well, I'm a good noodle, so let's go with the right side. The time has come to witness my greatest creation. Feast your eyes on this. <laughs> So in this story, Plankton creates a robot Mr. Krabs replica that's piloted by sea ants. I don't remember these characters in the show, but god are they horrifying! Hey, Squidward! Hey, Squidward! I will admit though, I love the cutscenes. Back in 2001, this was pretty impressive, and was like getting a genuinely good bonus episode of Spongebob. So our first minigame is Invasion of the Patty Snatchers. Here you take control of robot crabs and it's the most cursed thing ever! Can you imagine waking up in the middle of the night to see this thing chasing you? The game itself is pretty simple. Just run around Bikini Bottom and collect Krabby Patty ingredients from the sea ants. Why are you doing this? What are your intentions? Are you related to the Pikmin? The area isn't too big at all, so you shouldn't have much of an issue collecting the ingredients. After that, we cut to the Krusty Krab, and SpongeBob notices that Robot Krabs is stealing the formula! SpongeBob needs to warn the real Mr. Krabs, but how will he catch up to them? That's it! I'll go get my license! Okay, so we need to get SpongeBob's license so he can legally drive and warn Mr. Krabs. This is a time-sensitive issue, SpongeBob! Do you know how long the line at the DMV can be? Literally! So yeah, Spongebob has to take his driving test, and it's our job to drive him around this course safely. Or at least as safe as you can, controlling with a mouse and keyboard. Now you can tell this game takes place in an alternate universe, considering Spongebob actually gets his permit. You know, despite me driving like... <laughs> The rest of the game is pretty much the same. You walk around a map and need to collect items before the time runs out. Normally, I'd say this is a bad thing. However, it is charming and fast-paced enough that it doesn't get repetitive. Plus, the story keeps your interest enough to where you want to see what happens next. The wrong side storyline is much of the same. Literally, the driving course, collecting, just with a new story that ends up with Plankton's plan being thwarted and SpongeBob saving the day. Show of hands, how many of you cried during the first Spongebob movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who didn't raise your hand, how does it feel being a dirty liar? The first Spongebob movie was beautiful, a piece of cinematic art, but dang it, I want more! 
Luckily, THQ has got your back with the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, The Game. I can't believe this is happening here. It's horrible! Yeah, you know how movies sometimes have deleted scenes or extended editions? This game essentially acts as an extended version of the movie. The game is a platformer in the same vein as Battle for Bikini Bottom. That game was so good that it really did set the standard for licensed games as a whole. And ever since then, most SpongeBob games have tried to emulate it, with varying degrees of success. The SpongeBob movie falls somewhere? Close. It's not as good as Battle for Bikini Bottom, but it's definitely up there. As I mentioned before, the game is pretty much playing an extended version of the movie. Level 1 has SpongeBob needing to traverse to the Krusty Krab to put cheese on this guy's Krabby Patty. Say cheese. Ah, uh, the beginning. Yeah, a one minute bit at the beginning of the movie was given an entire level. The game uses a lot of assets from Battle for Bikini Bottom. The graphics, mechanics, music, almost everything. You'll also be collecting dumbbells for some reason. I don't get it. Something really cool is that the cutscenes use actual screenshots from the movie to tell the story, but not all the voices. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why they didn't have the rights to use some characters' voices, but not others. So, sometimes, you'll get a really well-delivered line from Patrick, and then this... It's 8 in the morning. Closed. Looks like your friend is out of here. From someone else. What, did they just get the pizza delivery guy who brought them lunch to record a few lines? Level 2 has us taking control of a drunken Patrick exploring a fever dream version of the Goofy Goober ice cream party boat. Now, I was going to comment more on the crazy nightmare landscape of this place, but we can just chalk it up to SpongeBob and Patrick being a little under the influence and hallucinating. But it still works really well. If you're a fan of the movie and want to experience a 10-hour version of it, then SpongeBob SquarePants the movie is for you. I'm really scared, man! Not you, though! Please stop talking! I'm kind of a stupid kid. I didn't play a lot of educational games growing up, so maybe that's why. But why bother playing them as a child when I could play them as an adult? Maybe then I'll finally be smarter rrr, rrr, rrr. SpongeBob SquarePants Through the Wormhole for the Leapster Educational Console, ages 5 through 8. Yeah, that sounds about right. This thing will teach us all about addition, animal classification, and geometry concepts! I graduated high school barely passing geometry, and now you're telling me that 5-year-olds are doing it? So the game starts off with a cutscene, with Spongebob and Patrick talking about science and time travel. It's believe wormholes are a way to travel through time. It's pretty bad when you're the stupidest person in the room. A room that has Spongebob and Patrick in it. Anyway, Spongebob decides to time travel using a wormhole found in an apple. Because where do worms come from? Wormholes, obviously. So now to the gameplay. Our first game involves math. Ugh, I hate math! We take control of Spongegar in the BCE times and play Frogger. It's pretty simple. Here we have 193, and it's our job to collect numbers that are less than 193. That's it, honestly. It's not rocket surgery. Just collect numbers and- Oh, I forgot I'm bad at math! Every single game on this cartridge follows the Frogger formula. Here we're in the medieval times and need to collect colors. That's yellow. That's yellow, and that's yellow. What is this? A game for babies? Now we're in the future with SpongeTron. And here's where the game actually gets kinda informational. Our first task is to collect animals that are extinct. Hey, is that Mordecai? After that, we have to collect animals that are nocturnal. Seriously? I didn't even know what that word meant until I was like 16. So yeah, overall, Spongebob Through the Wormhole is pretty good. If you're six years old and need an educational game. Or you're me. Alright, what else do we have? Um... Spongebob Squarepants The Yellow Avenger for the DS. It's, it's everything I've ever wanted? So in this game, Spongebob is hanging out at the laundromat with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. I mean, come on! It's a popular hangout spot where the dirty bubble attacks the gang. Luckily, 
it's just the dirty bubble, and SpongeBob throws him into a washing machine. But this proves to be a mistake, because Mermaid Man's belt was also thrown in the wash. Thus, somehow creating multiple tiny evil dirty bubbles and spongebob takes it upon himself to save the day so we finally take control of the yellow avenger and it's not that good it's a 2.5d side scroller meaning that you can really only travel left and right but the game exists on a 3d plane giving the illusion of 3d when, when it's really not. The gameplay itself is also just super unimpressive. It's really slow, with almost nothing ever happening. Like seriously, this game is probably 70% vast open spaces. No enemies, barely any obstacles. What there is a lot of, however, is reading. Come on, I just played an educational game, don't make me do more! And oh man, anytime you do anything, and I mean anything, the game has to load! And it's not like a quick load, no, it's like... Oh, brother! This game just has the aura of a bootleg mobile game. Yeah, with how little charm it has, I wouldn't be surprised if you found this on the App Store created by some Russian developer. But there is a section where you milk a jellyfish, so I guess that some points to it. So the first thing I did was type in Spongebob Flash Games into Google, where I was then brought to a website that gave not only my computer, but me a virus. <laughs> Can someone give me some cough syrup? But hey, at least there's Spongebob games. Priorities! Games like Krabby Patty Crisis. Patty Royale? Oh goodness me, I hope this isn't a Spongebob Fortnite crossover. Or we can play Serve and Protect. Oh wait, there is a T, it's just oddly off-center. We'll start off with Patty Royale. Oh, look at these instructions! Thanks! But no thanks, I'll pass. So the game has Spongebob barricaded behind these tables while hungry customers approach him. And it's your job to throw Krabby Patties at them before they reach you. It's a mix between Space Invaders and the first episode of Spongebob. Yeah, remember that? I also like the choices of customers. We've got Fred, aka the My Leg guy. We've got the CHOCOLATE guy, and strangely enough, the salty spittoon, you gotta have muscles on your muscles, you gotta have muscles on your eyeballs, guy. The game's pretty easy to be honest, definitely a game you might play at Weenie Hut Jr. Whoa, look at this, the invasion of Fred. We are breaking so many legs tonight. But yeah, it's a basic Space Invaders clone. The other game, Serve and Protect, is literally the same game. Only this time, Mr. Krabs is running around and you can't hit him, making the game artificially more annoying. Just go to your office, it isn't that hard! ToonGames.com I'm getting major elementary school computer lab vibes from this. Hopefully the game's good. Oh god, it's the farthest thing from good! It's horrifying, nightmarish, disgusting! Is this what you call a Spongebob? I'm ugly and I'm proud! Loader! I'm ugly and I'm proud! So yeah, welcome to Spongebob Tractor 2. Don't ask me about the first one, I have no idea where or what it is. Select a character. Why is Spongebob locked? Whatever, I like Sandy. We're going flying, naked! Hashtag, not my Sandy. Okay, so where do we begin? The game itself is one of those Trials clones. Yeah, those side-scrolling racing games with a focus on physics where you need to tilt your character left and right so they don't fall over. Here though, there aren't any ramps. It's the least extreme, extreme game I've ever played. Just hold up and you win. But at the same time, you lose because you have to stare at this! What is this? It looks like a gritty reimagining of the Spongebob universe. Bikini Bottom looks gross, Sandy looks terminally ill, and Squidward... Well, he's just Squidward. Loser, loser. What a fun game. Aren't you jealous you aren't playing this right now? Okay, enough fooling around. Time to get serious. Here's Spongebob Kill Terrorist! Spongebob... Kill a terrorist. Was this on Nick.com? 
Alrighty, so we take control of SpongeBob and, oh, excuse me, and we need to grab this bomb and... <laughs> do that! So allow me to explain this very deep game. There's a terrorist. You must kill him. You do this by grabbing a bomb. Once you grab the bomb, you're given a time limit in which you need to make it to him before the bomb goes off. In theory, this is a really cool concept. Being forced to complete platforming challenges within a short time period. It's just a shame that that cool concept is given to a game where SpongeBob has to blow up Microsoft Paint Hitler! What?! Listen to that ambient nature. That's really what this game decided to go with. It's so peaceful. I reached a point though where the game got pretty difficult. Level 6 to be exact. Maybe it's because I didn't stop to time the platforms when they would disappear. That's because I refused to give this game even a tiny bit of my brain power. However little there is to begin with. SpongeBob's Mirror Adventure. Now, what could we expect from a game where SpongeBob is dressed up as Mario? Well, obviously a game where SpongeBob really wants to be Mario. Are you okay, SpongeBob? You need me to call a doctor? Okay, so here's our first obstacle. A spike pit. <laughs> Alright, well that didn't work. Okay, maybe we just need to get a good running start and... No. Am I dumb? Can I not make the first jump on the first level of this children's Flash game? That's like playing Super Mario Bros and dying on the first Goomba. Multiple times! Seriously, I've died like 10 times What? Wait, who are you? Are you pushing that box over here? Are you my friend? Thank you! Now if you could just, you know, not move at a snail's grandma's pace, that'd be great! Thank you! There we go! Now this game is easy peasy lemon... DIFFICULT! I was honestly stuck on the first level for like 10 minutes until I finally beat it. Easy there, SpongeBob. You don't want to end up in the same cell as Soldier Boy. Level 2 is... Oh, more of the same thing. Waiting for this warthog to push over a box. I'll pass. Next? SpongeBob SquarePants Jellyfish Jam. What a beautiful day. Beautiful sky. Beautiful plants. Oh my god, this game has cutscenes. Plankton must be behind this. All right, SpongeBob, I'll bite. Please explain to me how a jellyfish that craps out a Krabby Patty is somehow Plankton's evil scheme. No answer? I didn't think so. So in this game, you have to jump and collect jellyfish. Simple as that, really. If they surround themselves with electricity, all you have to do is shoot out a bubble to trap them. Then catch them. It's not exactly what I'd call a good game, but it's functional, you know, kind of. SpongeBob's jump also takes up like three-fourths of the screen. Impressive. So yeah, I guess it's not the worst thing I've ever played. There's no music though, so get used to hearing this a lot. Okay, the game currently being loaded is called SpongeBob Love Hamburger. Why am I being greeted with the SpongeBob theme in what sounds like German? I like it. It's kind of aggressive, but everything in German kind of sounds aggressive. Is that racist? I'm sorry. At least SpongeBob's optimistic. We are then given the instructions in English, probably Japanese or Chinese, and probably in Korean. Is that also racist? I'm sorry again. So all you have to do is hit the left and right arrow keys back and forth. Doing this will allow SpongeBob to eat a ton of Krabby Patties really fast. The objective, of course, is to do it faster than your opponent. If you're out of sync or maybe hit the right arrow key twice, SpongeBob will choke and it'll slow you down. Really basic, but strangely addicting, seeing how fast you can hit the arrow keys while still having rhythm. Although the background music choice is a little odd. Big Larry came round just to put him down. Yeah, it's that ripped pants song from the episode where SpongeBob, well, well rips his pants. I really love that song, and it's super catchy, but has zero reason to be playing on a loop non-stop, because what ends up happening is I play the game like this. SpongeBob turned into a clown, and no girl ever wants to dance with a fool who went and ripped his pants. Which is good for me, but annoying for everyone else. Ah, who cares, I love this song. 
Sandy, what are you doing? You can't eat without your helmet. This game totally killed my immersion. SpongeBob's Karate Contest. In this game, SpongeBob violently beats up Sandy. Like, really violently. SpongeBob, stop! She can't breathe underwater! Oh no, wait, yeah, she can. Sandy also never hits you back, despite this being somewhat of a fighting game, so... If you ever wanted to use Sandy as a punching bag, this is the game for you. Also, the police will be arriving at your house soon. So it looks like my computer can only handle one more crappy game before it spontaneously combusts. Let's make it a good one! SpongeBob Bike 3D. I immediately already hate it. Of course, of course it had to be an ugly Mario Kart ripoff. So in this game, you play as Spongebob and race, who else? Other colored Spongebobs, because Spongebob is the only character in the TV show Spongebob Squarepants. Spongebob. Spongebob. It's f***ing garbage. What else do you want me to say? You hold the up arrow key and move left to right. Collecting the Krabby Patties makes you go faster and the jellyfish will slow you down. Cool. Hey, what's with this yellow line in the middle of the screen? Come on, Shield Arcade! I'd expect this from CoolMathGames.com, but not from you! You've soiled the good online Flash Games name! Soiled it! Soiled it! Soiled it! I knew then it had to be Destiny! So yeah, there were a bunch of Spongebob games released on the Wii, and since I've been in a bit of a Wii kick lately, I decided to talk about them and see how they rank in compared to the millions of other Wii titles out there. Starting off with Spongebob's Truth or Square, released on October 26, 2009. In this game, Mr. Krabs entrusts the Krabby Patty secret formula to Spongebob. Think of all the Krabby Patties will sell. You're not Mr. Krabs, get out of my pineapple. Anyway, Spongebob accepts this task, but quickly forgets where he hid the formula and enlists the help of Plankton to get it back. Coincidentally enough, he himself being the secret formula. Yeah, I know they backpedaled in that episode and said Plankton's weren't the secret formula, but look at this man. Would you really put it past him? So Plankton uses a device to get into SpongeBob's memories, because SpongeBob can't remember anything when he's sad. And the two adventure together through the best memories SpongeBob has, all while Plankton is secretly planning on stealing the formula. The game is very reminiscent of Battle for Bikini Bottom, all the way from having level 1 take place in jellyfish fields while you beat the crap out of a bunch of robots. The game is an action platformer. You know, like Battle for Bikini Bottom. I feel like that game was just so successful and beloved that most future SpongeBob games would just end up doing that. Which is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because it is a formula that works really well for SpongeBob, and one you can kind of expand upon in every game. The power-ups here are really charming. SpongeBob morphing his head into a hammer and headbanging robots into oblivion is so metal. But at the same time, as a SpongeBob Games fan, this just feels kind of repetitive. We're just going through the motions at this point. This is like the fourth SpongeBob game I played on this channel alone that has robots as the main enemies. But with all of that being said, the game is still really fun. It does have that classic SpongeBob charm you'd expect from these games. Especially for coming out in 2009, a time where most games were becoming generic first and third person shooters all around. So seeing a game still have that quirky platforming vibe is really heartwarming in my eyes. Oh yeah, and there is co-op! But it's about as cooperative as Super Mario Galaxy, in that the second player just controls Plankton and can use the pointer to collect items and coins. The perfect little brother mechanic. If this was your first ever Spongebob game, it absolutely would be an awesome time. So, yeah, okay. Fun game. And in case you were wondering, it turns out the formula was just in Spongebob's pocket the entire time. I WOULD SAY I'M UPSET! But this is the same guy who lost his name tag because he wore his shirt backwards. So, nothing surprises me anymore. Okay, up next is... <laughs> uh, Spongebob in Tehran the game? Well, how'd you do that, Spongebob? No, it's Spongebob Squarepants Atlantis Squarepantis. Level 1, Tank Lantis Plank Pantis. I need some water. So this game is based off of the TV movie Atlantis Squarepantis. I remember watching it when it first aired and wasn't too in love with it. And that's... 
pretty much how I feel about the game as well. The whole gimmick of the movie was that it was a magical land where anything could happen. So that leaves the game open to a lot of magical, wacky concepts. For example, level 1 has you controlling plankton in a tank causing mayhem and destruction. Okay, okay, this is fun. But then level 2 has you playing as Spongebob and Patrick doing some kind of top-down puzzle. Like, it's so drastically different from what we were doing. I hate puzzles! And I hate stealth! And this goes on for so long. The Plankton portion took me about 6 minutes to play through, but I've been doing this Metal Gear Solid nonsense for 20 minutes, and it's still going! Once we get past that, the next level is an on-rails shooter, where you take pictures of art and throw tomatoes at stupid people in your way. THEN, all of a sudden, we're playing Guitar Hero! I'm not gonna sit here and go through every game mode, but you can see what I'm getting at, right? The game is just a mishmash of random minigames, interspersed with bootleg Iranian cutscenes. I'm Patrick, and I don't know what to say. The problem is that it doesn't feel like a SpongeBob game. You could easily reskin this and call it Wii Party 43, and nobody would bat an eye. Just generic minigames that sometimes kind of utilize motion controls. Eh, I'm not really feeling this one. But I will take another cursed cutscene. Alrighty then, up next is Creature from the Krusty Krab. There's a saying out there, second verse, same as the first. This game, once again, is another 3D platformer with action elements. Explore the stage with SpongeBob's unique abilities, collect coins, yeah, 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 we've done this before! But, just like with every other Spongebob game, it's still loads of fun. The game takes place in the characters' dreams, this time Spongebob, Patrick, and even Plankton. So it's kinda like that one episode where Spongebob was hopping through everyone's dreams. The Spongebob portion of the game is what we've come to know and kind of love with the platforming, but they do mix it up with a gosh dang car racing section, and it's actually pretty solid. I mean, it's no Mario Kart or nothing, but it gets the job done. And everyone loves steering cars with the Wii Remote, right? Well, you better. The Patrick sections of the game, however, honestly may be my favorite. Patrick dreams that he's a superhero, so all of the stages have this comic book aesthetic to them. Heavy on the cell shading, having BAM, BOOM, and OOF pop up every time you do an attack, it really does look like a completely new game. I kinda wish the entire game had this style. Seriously, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the game is what the world really needs right now. Oh yeah, then we have the Plankton sections, where he's being chased by a giant Krabby Patty. There's probably some psychological analysis we can do here, but I'm not qualified for that! I'll just say that the multiple playable characters and unique worlds within those character parts really make the game feel unique and different, while still having a consistent tone and feel. A good game! Alright, now let's check out SpongeBob! And Nicktoons. Globs of Doom! Not technically a SpongeBob game, but a Nickelodeon crossover game. You know your show is too powerful when one character is able to dwarf the entire network in terms of name value. Now these crossover games have always been an awesome time. Nicktoons Unite was an amazing first step, and its sequel Volcano Island is where the series started to focus more on Spongebob and Danny Phantom, with a lot of fan art and... shipping. Ugh. But now, we have Globs of Doom, featuring Spongebob and... you know, some other people. Who are you? Can I help you? The game follows these asteroids that crash into multiple universes full of an evil goo, like Venom. And it's up to the Nickelodeon crew, both good and bad, to save the day. These crossover games always hit that perfect sweet spot of being incredibly simple and incredibly fun at the same time. You got two types of attacks and simply need to kill anything that moves. It's a great co-op experience, and that's all I'll probably talk about with this game. I mean, after all, it's not really a Spongebob game. And we've got to make room for the final game on this list! Plankton's Robotic Revenge! Now, I'm not sure if we saved the best for last, but definitely the most unique. The plot of this game has a shipwreck and a bunch of batteries fall into the ocean. 
Yeah, BP at it again. That's right, this is a reference to the 2010 oil spills. Anyway, these batteries fall in the chum bucket and activate Plankton's robotic army. And it's up to SpongeBob and friends to... Save the day. Right off the bat, I gotta say that these are some of the best looking cutscenes I've ever seen. Like, in any game. They're stylized in such a way that it really looks like a TV special or something. The gameplay goes for a pretty simple approach. It's an arcade-style beat-em-up similar to the Nickelodeon crossover games we just talked about. You have two attacks. Your close-range melee attacks and a ranged weapon. You can buy all kinds of different guns to fit your playstyle. I never had this game as a kid, and I feel pretty depressed about that because this is something I would have instantly fallen in love with. It's not perfect by any means, but I appreciate the fact that it's not just another 3D platformer. For a fun time with friends, it definitely checks that box. There's all kinds of fun minigames to participate in, and even the first boss with giant robot plankton feels really epic. Like, if I told you this was the final boss, you wouldn't find it too hard to believe. The game is best experienced with friends, so if you don't have any, you know, hit me up on Twitter and we can have a little co-op game night. I'll even order Pizza Hut. The ratio of games involving SpongeBob versus games that don't have SpongeBob is disturbingly low. Look at these numbers. Are they even real? I don't know. Where did I get this chart? Yeah, as I'm sure many of you may already know, I'm a bit of a SpongeBob fanatic, and I need more SpongeBob games! I've already played all of his games on the Game Boy Advance, GameCube, PlayStation, you name it! So, desperate times call for desperate measures, because today we're going to check out some SpongeBob plug and play consoles. But hey, it's SpongeBob, right? They wouldn't do him dirty like that, not like Dirty Dan! So, enough messing around. Let's check these games out. First up is simply called the SpongeBob SquarePants Plug and Play Console. Straightforward and to the point, I like that. What I don't like though is playing with SpongeBob's nose. Listen, if you're enjoying this, that's great, but I'm a little uncomfortable. First game is SpongeBob's Bubble Pop. Huge, mysterious bubbles are surrounding Bikini Bottom and blocking all the exits to the city. SpongeBob has taken it upon himself to burst every last one of these nasty bubbles and free Bikini Bottom once more. King Neptune, a story about liberation and freedom? Sounds epic, let's do it! Okay. So, breakouts. Like the one in the arcade in the 70s. You know, that's it. What else am I supposed to talk about? You control SpongeBob and move from left to right and bounce this bubble to hit the other ones to destroy them. I don't really see how this is stopping the citizens of Bikini Bottom from leaving, but then again, this is the same town that has a bubble phobia. Or is bubble racist? Yeah, we won't forget. We'll never forget. A little bit into this game though, SpongeBob started to look like this. And I don't know why. The game is fine, I guess, considering it's just a reskinned Atari game, but there is a strategy, and I'll let you in on it. First you do this, then that, then this, that, this, then that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and that. Up next is Sandy's Surf Adventure. A giant bullworm and its nasty henchmen are terrorizing Bikini Bottom. Uh-oh. Well, we all know that this isn't just any bullworm. It was an Alaskan bullworm! Against SpongeBob's wishes, Sandy has decided to repel their attack on her own. Yeah! You go, girl! So the game is a shoot-'em-up, similar to Gradius. Or that crappy Silver Surfer game on the NES. You ride around on a clam and shoot these cute smiling amoebas and seahorses. Why you gotta be making me do that? I feel terrible. Again, not much to say. Another really basic game. I get that this is a plug and play console, so there's limited space for things, but man, could this game use some music. I'm not asking for a lot, just something like. Yeah, that's all. Also, the bullworm never shows up. So thanks for that. Invasion of the Hooks. The Hooks! The Hooks! They dangle down with their pleasing shapes and beguiling colors. And just when you think you've found the land of milk and honey, they grab you and haul you up high! I love that so much. So in this game, it's hook season! And instead of only SpongeBob and Patrick being insubordinate little shits, 
Squidward and Sandy join in on the fun. So these hooks descend, ready to grab a friend and put them in a can of tuna, and it's SpongeBob's job to stop these evil hooks by throwing Krabby Patties at them, sure. I mean, hey, if I were fishing and I reeled in a burger, I'd be pretty stoked. Conversely, though, if I reeled in a squirrel, I'd probably never fish again. There's actually a nice challenge to this game, needing to choose which character to save depending on the speed of certain hooks. I actually had to sit up and focus while playing. A true pro gamer move. Later on, Gary and even Mr. Krabs joins in on the fun. You became the very thing you sought to destroy. The game ends when everyone dies. The gang's all here. Next is Patrick and the Maze. Patrick the Star, thanks for clarifying, has managed to get himself and his friends lost in a coral maze. Oh, like that one time they got lost and consulted the magic conch shell. Again, this is a really fun game. You explore this maze and try to look for all of your friends. There's obstacles you gotta try and avoid, treasure to collect, mini games to play like Simon says. This game is just missing some... noise. Don't worry, your speakers aren't broken. That's just how quiet this game is! Broken up only by the occasional sound effect. Oh, there it is! Good job, Patrick. You did it. And the final game on this plug-and-play is the Super Chum Bucket! Plankton has used his remote control robots to capture Sandy Cheeks to bribe SpongeBob into giving him the delicious Krabby Patty recipe. SpongeBob will never give away this recipe, and decides to risk life and sponge to rescue Sandy himself. That's right, SpongeBob will die before he gives away that recipe. Such an admirable feat. So in this game, Spongebob needs to platform his way to victory, making precise jumps, avoiding the obstacles, and reaching Plankton, only for him to escape and to do it again. Yep, if you've been paying attention, you'll quickly realize that this is just Donkey Kong! Which, hey, that's an awesome game. If you're gonna rip something off, you might as well do it with a fun game. Now this game is actually challenging but not in the good way. Its difficulty doesn't come from timing, reactions, etc., but instead stems from the god-awful controls! Surprise, surprise, it doesn't feel as good as Mario! Everything is so stiff that I feel like I need to call a doctor since it's been lasting longer than four hours. It's fine, I guess. So that was the SpongeBob SquarePants plug-and-play console. And that's where you think our journey might end. But... There is another plug-and-play console that, of course, we have to talk about. SpongeBob SquarePants The Fry Cook Games Whoa, this one's got music? We're already off to a great start. So here we have, like, eight mini-games based off of one single episode. The Fry Cook Games, you know, that's, that's why they called it that. In this episode, Mr. Krabs and Plankton are in a heated rivalry about which restaurant has the best employee. SpongeBob acts like a boastful little ass, and this upsets Patrick. So, Patrick then joins the chum bucket, and the two have a heated anime rivalry. Now, this game is different, because it acts like an actual sports festival. Basically, you'll join a cup, and then we'll be given 6 to 8 minigames to play back to back. They're short and simple. It's all about getting the best and fastest time. So, think of this more like... WarioWare. Anyway, the first game on the list is Runaway Tray. SpongeBob is filled with determination and running like a madman jumping over hurdles. You just gotta press the button to jump over them and get the fastest time. After that, we're playing Air Patty. You juggle this Krabby Patty in the air and not let it hit the floor because what do you think this is, Burger King? The Krusty Krab has standards! I'm not gonna lie, this game has some pretty animations for being on a plug-and-play. SpongeBob's facial reactions, movements, it's all really nice. Oh hell yeah, I got a backflipper! And a spin -a rooney I'm not too sure what that means though, I'm not an athlete. Stack a snack! Well, the only snack I see here is... Mm. Anyway, this game is kind of funny, but for stupid reasons. So you got this specific order of Krabby Patty here to the left. Ingredients then start falling from the sky, and you gotta match it to the order. Sometimes it's pretty simple. Okay, I get that. And other times, it's something only a psycho would order. This is literally that one meme. You know, the beast churger one. 
SpongeBob really is the king of memes. Up next, we got SpongeBob bouncing on jelly, and you gotta get a high score. I don't know. I just mash buttons and move the stick around. Here, SpongeBob shooting ketchup and mustard onto Krabby Patties. Again, I don't know. All right, now this game's pretty fun. It's like DDR or Guitar Hero. SpongeBob's ice skating or butter skating, and you have to hit the corresponding buttons at the right time. Here we get to see more of SpongeBob's awesome animations. Although unlike Guitar Hero, the buttons have no rhythm with the music. They're two completely separate things. <laughs> Great! And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. You play all of these games back to back. The only things that change are the backgrounds and the scores you have to get in order to win. All the games control fine and actually sound nice considering this one has music. The animations, of course, really stood out to me. They're really eccentric, almost like they were showing off, like, look what we could do on a plug and play. So yeah, those were SpongeBob's plug and play consoles. And in my unbiased opinion, they were awesome! The original Mario Kart on the SNES was a great game. I mean, come on, it sold 8.76 million copies. That's a lot of Mario Kart. But there was a way to make this game even more popular, potentially outselling that 8.76 million to 8.77 million. It's simple, okay? One word, made up of two words, SpongeBob. Super SpongeBob Kart. A game with- Whoa, why are you naked? Where are your pants? Did you rip them again? Super SpongeBob Kart. Again, a hack of the original Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, featuring No and Help Me. No, in all seriousness, this is a really impressive hack. It's gone through a complete makeover to have a SpongeBob theme, and it's done insanely well. The stages, the character sprites, all handled with love. And a tiny sprinkle of nightmare fuel. The character roster includes Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Crab, Squidward, Plankton, Gary, and Snelly. Yeah, Gary's love interest in the snail race episode. Let's go, Gary! Start moving! The core gameplay is still just Super Mario Kart, so it's fine on that end. But everything else has that nice Spongebob flair to it. The tracks are all renamed and reskinned, as well as the items and stage hazards. There are blue jellyfish! You know, the kind that you put on a burger! Side note, after watching that episode where Spongebob puts jellyfish jelly on a Krabby Patty, I had to try it. I was like 10, by the way, and it wasn't the worst thing out there. Also, don't look down here. Everyone's eyes looks like they're trying to suck the soul out of your body. Take what you want. Just don't hurt my family. Still don't know why you're naked, though. Everyone else seems to be wearing clothes. Maybe it's that invisible spray. This game's actually a lot more difficult. The AI is turned up to 11 and don't mind being cheap one bit. So if you're looking for a challenge, this game is definitely it. Also, if you're looking for Mrs. Puff, well, there she goes. We did it! First place, baby! Time to celebrate! What did I just see? Did David Hasselhoff's giant head float by and shoot a trophy out of his skull to give to SpongeBob? This is the best game ever made. Also, SpongeBob and Patrick found some pants! It's a Christmas miracle! Here's a game called Super Mr. Krabs. It's a ROM hack of Super Mario Bros. 1, where instead of Mario, you take control of Mr. Krabs. It's a pretty good game, honestly. Watch out for Plankton, who grew 100 times his size. Or maybe Mr. Krabs shrunk down? To Why am I questioning this? I don't have much to talk about with this game. All of the stages are new, which is nice, giving us a brand new Mario... Uh, Mr. Krabs experience. Ah. <sighs> The sweet smell of an all-day sucker. Apart from a few sprite changes, everything else is still basically Super Mario Bros. The music, the gameplay, it's just an all-around solid ROM hack. But... I am curious to see what Bowser looks like. You are no match for me, walking jellyfish! <laughs> ah, I see. The Flying Dutchman. See you in hell. Oh, gosh! Please stay 15 feet away from me at all times! You need some help, SpongeBob? You need me to call someone? Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Are you feeling it? 
Now, Mr. Krabs. Oh, yeah. Mr. Krabs. I don't feel very comfortable right now. Yeah, the game doesn't have a plot. Like, at all. Every single time you beat the castle, SpongeBob is here to ask you if you're feeling it. I'm feeling a warm spot. Every time. Thanks. After thou feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. SpongeBob on Atari. There he is. There he is. Video games sure are neat. So in this game, you got a platform, I guess. Or jump around. Or even better, jump into this pit. I'm bad at this game. With Atari games, you really gotta use your imagination. Like, maybe we're jumping around because we're trying to escape the wrath of the sash-ringing, uh, trash-singing, mash-flinging, bringing, uh... The ash-slinging slasher! Yeah, that! Now listen, the only way to play this game is with a real controller. Yeah, firmly grasp it. No need to repeat. No. This isn't to the beat, and you see where we coming from. It's what you running from over there in the dark. Okay, here's Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm sure it's the totally legit Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh no, I was deceived. So what we have here is Sonic One, but with SpongeBob. That's it! Nothing else has changed. Just a random sprite change with SpongeBob. I mean, hey, at least he looks happy. Now, you may be wondering why SpongeBob is in a Sonic game. Well, it's very simple. You see, SpongeBob has many alter egos, one of which being the Quickster. When SpongeBob temporarily joined the International Justice League of Super Acquaintances, yeah, remember that? Make that too! And the Quickster's special ability, of course, was to be able to run really, really quick. So, this right here is actually the Quickster's own side story. Wow, the more you know. Hey, you want to see me do the world's fastest speedrun of Sonic 1? Want to see me do it again? I'm sorry, what? What did I just see? New Super SpongeBob SquarePants Wii? Oh no, Squidward, Sandy, two Patrick, two Patricks. This is the end. So, okay, yeah, let's just play some of this. Oh, no. Oh, no, Squidward, not you, too! And, do oh, Sandy, come on! Oh, you guys need to get straight back to Super SpongeBob Kart. Today is Princess Peach's birthday. That's not the princess. Oh, oh no, happy birthday, Spongebob. Bowser Jr., are you here to put an end to this nightmare? I'm rooting for you, buddy. Oh my lord, so what we have here is new Super Mario Bros on the Wii, but instead of playing as those pesky Mario Bros, we play as naked SpongeBob characters. My dream has finally come true! It's a pretty interesting hack. A good amount of detail and love was put into this. It's obviously not perfect. There's plenty of what vibes, but it's still cool for what it is. Just like many of these other games though, apart from the reskinned characters, the core game is still the same as the original. But I haven't played New Super Mario Bros. Wii in quite some time, so it was quite the treat coming back to it, accompanied with this. Alright, we've made it to the final boss. We are coming for you, SpongeBob, right after we defeat This is actually the scariest thing I've seen in my life. So, we need to defeat Giant Plankton, and after defeating the Giant Plankton, which Plankton flies by and turns Giant Plankton into Super Mecha Giga Plankton! This is the weirdest episode of SpongeBob I've ever seen. Well, after this one. So we defeat Plankton, rescue SpongeBob, where Squidward and SpongeBob then romantically board the hot air balloon, leaving Sandy behind. Okay, you know that this is someone's fanfiction finally come to life. So, uh... How's Gary? Starting things off with SpongeBob SquarePants typing, released in 2004 for the PC and could have been for the GameCube. I mean, Jesus, it would give this controller another purpose at least. I don't think I really need to explain this game. But yeah, it's a game that teaches you how to type. The core gameplay itself is a little bland and dead. There's no music or anything to really visually stimulate a kid. 
It's basically just Yellow Hands Mavis Bacon. Beacon, yeah, whatever. What makes this game really stand out and pretty special, though, are all the cool little cutscenes. You expect people to compete for a peanut butter and jellyfish jelly sandwich? It's all really funny stuff. The writing feels like something that actually could have been in an episode of the show. Basically, the Krusty Krab is hosting a typing tournament where the winner will receive a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Great. If you don't sit properly, you may experience back, arm, or shoulder pain. You might even end up looking like this. Oh, Jesus, yeah! That would absolutely scar any little kid from wanting to play any more of this game. You gotta love the choppy animation. It feels like a YouTube parody or something. Like SpongeBob's gonna end up in China any second now. And in the floral print, the prodigious pentacle of typing power, Patrick Starr. <laughs> That's pretty much all there is to talk about, considering, again, the game is just typing. There are some mini-games, though, to spice up the gameplay. Yeah. Don't that just look spicy? Also pro-trans, while SpongeBob is super progressive. A neat little educational game, for sure. Up next, we have SpongeBob SquarePants 3D Obstacle Odyssey, once again released on the PC in 2004. This game is really weird. The best way I can describe it, I guess, is that it's monkey ball, but without the ball. And that's it. Eventually, they introduce platforming, and the game becomes the most nothing platformer ever. Now, you might be looking at these stages so far and think to yourself, man, there's a lot of tutorial stages. But no, this is the game. The entire game takes place in this empty void with random platforms on it. You run around, jump, and collect items. That's it! How do you even legally get to call this a game? It feels like a tech demo or something. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if it was used as a tech demo for Battle for Bikini Bottom or something. And then some dickhead at Nickelodeon said, yeah, we could just sell this too. It's so lazy. And just look at SpongeBob's face. Were you trying to make him scary? Because mission accomplished. A lot of people have said that Bubsy 3D is one of the laziest excuses for a platformer, but just look at this. I think SpongeBob 3D Obstacle Odyssey takes the cake. Literally a platformer. This is SpongeBob SquarePants Underpants Slam. Released exclusively on the Xbox Live Marketplace in 2007, the plot of this game is that a storm hit a shipment of King Neptune's underwear, spreading it all throughout Bikini Bottom, and he's enlisted the help of SpongeBob and friends to get them back. Why, why he just can't go to the store and buy it like the rest of us peasants, though, is another thing. Honestly, this game is just like a mini Metroidvania. Every stage has a hundred pieces of underwear hidden in objects, enemies, and secret locations. You're given a fairly short time span to find all of them, with a few seconds added to the clock when you find some undies. I mean, the stages aren't too crazy with the mazes and whatnot, but as a kid, I could easily see myself getting lost and trying to figure out where I've already been. But then again, I was a stupid kid and a stupid adult. But hey, the game is apparently multiplayer. So I've heard, I mean, I don't have anyone to play with, but exploring these pretty big stages and needing to collect all of the underwear in a short time span feels a lot more doable with some friends. I don't know, I personally didn't really like the game. It was again, just so nothing. Just like a 2D version of 3D Obstacle Odyssey. Like nothing here feels like SpongeBob. You could reskin the game with any other franchise and it wouldn't change a thing. I guess since it was an Xbox Live Arcade exclusive, there's a good chance the game was only like five bucks. So if that was the case, then sure, the game's not too bad. All right, really quick before we move on, I just wanted to give a shout out to Bikini Bottom Bowling. It's an arcade cabinet you can find in a Chuck E. Cheese or Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It looked like a pretty basic bowling game, with the ball in the middle to roll around to hit the pins. I actually went to my local Chuck E. Cheese just to see if maybe the game was there, but no. I'm not surprised, but I'm still disappointed. It looks like a fun little bowling game. Shoutouts to this guy, I hope those five tickets took them far. Alright, here's something a little goofy and potentially stupid as hell. SpongeBob Surf and Skate Road Trip, released on the Xbox 360 on November 8th, 2011. Now, what makes this game unique is that it uses the Kinect. 
so you know it's going to be mid. I just learned that word. The game is an auto skater, or auto surfer, depending on which game mode you choose. And all you're really doing is leaning left to right to avoid obstacles and hit the checkpoints. Skating is one of those things that's so hard to master in a virtual experience. Tony Hawk's Ride was a game that focused on skating with a skateboard prop, and it was just so unresponsive, busted, and too ambitious to pull off what everyone really wanted, which was to do six skate tricks in the comfort of your living room. SpongeBob Surf and Skate Road Trip bypasses that brokenness by just being a really simple game. Which, hey, I don't know. I wasn't a young kid when the Kinect came out, so maybe just being able to move left and right and seeing the characters do those things was enough to keep families entertained. It just doesn't feel like I'm surfing in Bikini Bottom, you know? The camera is too dynamic. I feel like the character should stay in the center of the screen, you know what I'm saying? When Patrick flies all the way to the right and catches some air, it just doesn't feel immersive. To compare it to another Tony Hawk game, Downhill Jam is kind of the gameplay and camera work I was expecting. Notice how no matter what we do, the camera is always right behind us. So if we're standing behind a Kinect, this would feel like we're projecting ourselves into the game. The voice acting also just sounds like those AI-generated voices. It doesn't feel real. So, you may be wondering why I've invited you all here. Snap back to reality. Oh. There goes gravity. Oh. There goes rabbit. Overall, though, the game is just... Fine. I've played worse Kinect games. Like Star Wars. Let's just forget that that ever existed. And last but not least, we have SpongeBob Squiggle Pants, released on the Wii on April 10th, 2011. Now, this game is also special because it requires a lesser known accessory for the console the U Draw. Definitely some kind of precursor to the Wii U. It was a gamepad you can draw on with a stylus and even use as a motion controller. There were only 10 games released on the Wii that were compatible with this thing. Even with that being the case though, Nintendo still loved it, obviously, and would eventually lay the groundwork for the Wii U. The game starts off with Patchy the Pirate explaining to us how the U-Draw works. Just tap the stylus thingy on the U-Draw game tablet, me bucko, and you can select objects and other fascinating interactions. I guess this was a cheaper alternative than to animate Spongebob. The game itself, though, is, believe it or not, a goddamn WarioWare clone. Yeah, micro games. You're given a few seconds to complete some kind of task, and it's all really fun stuff. The stylus and motion control of the U-Draw really adds that extra layer of fun for the console. Like seriously, the games are given so much more creative range of what you have to do, and it's way more responsive than the Wii Remote. Like, tilting the U-Draw back and forth feels like you're more in control of it because it's this big, bulky thing in your hands, as opposed to a little remote. But oh man, my absolute favorite thing about this game is just with how stylized it is. That's the best word I could use to describe the entire game. Stylized. Every micro game has a unique look to it, whether it be these cute little crayon drawings, the super detailed and dark horror images, the badass comic book style, or the ever-charming 8-bit simplistic style. And that's just to name a few. Seriously, this game is so insanely good! How has it not reached god status on the internet like Battle for Bikini Bottom has? In between each couple of challenges, you're given more patchy cutscenes, which are always cute. Just lovely, I'm all choked up, I... <laughs> ah! Oh! <laughs> Just give Patchy a second, kids. There are three things I never thought I'd see in this world. Flying Razor Scooters, Oreo O's 2, and a remake of one of my favorite games of all time, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. <laughs> Mad Men actually did it! This teaser trailer came out over a year ago on June 5th, 2019, and ever since then, I've just refreshed Google a hundred times every day until more was announced. As time goes on, more and more trailers release, and oh man, I'm 12 years old all over again. We get glimpses of the gameplay and graphics, all of which look super beautiful. I already thought the original GameCube game looked nice, but when you see a side-by-side -side comparison, just wow. And after years and years, alright, just one year actually, the game is finally in my grasp. 
Now, I'm not too sure how I'm gonna approach this video. I've already talked about Battle for Bikini Bottom a little bit in my Spongebob games video, so I decided I'm just gonna do whatever! Talk about the upgrades, what they changed, comparing it to the original, and whatever fanboy moments come along. The first thing we see when loading up the game is the title screen. Now, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but let's do exactly that anyway! I love this art style! It genuinely looks like a movie poster! But more importantly, do they got the theme song? Oh, oh, I can't play the rest of it because we'll get hit with a copyright strike. I'm pretty sure the original game just used an instrumental version of the theme, which totally killed my 12-year-old vibe. SpongeBob's also pretty excited for it. I think. In case this is your first venture into Battle for Bikini Bottom, the story follows Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. I, I I can't do a Plankton. He creates a robot army, but accidentally switches it to Don't Obey. Maybe you shouldn't have programmed that. Thus having robots wreak havoc upon Bikini Bottom, and it's up to our favorite undersea sponge to save the day. The animation still definitely looks like a GameCube game. I wasn't expecting a full-on remake with modern graphics built from the ground up, but I don't know. It's still really charming, though. The characters have more detail in their face now, meaning the reactions are more eccentric and fun. I have devised an ingenious plan to finally steal the Krabby Patty formula! The first area of the game has you exploring SpongeBob's house, and oh my god, immediately, I was hit with a metric hectone of nostalgia! For many reasons. Being able to explore SpongeBob's house in a fully interactable manner is something I could have only dreamed of as a kid. And doing it again 17 years later just makes me one happy goofy goober. Now here's the thing, I bought this game on my Switch so I could play it with a GameCube controller like I did back in the day. I wanted to have the most genuine nostalgic recreation as I could. This was a mistake in many ways. For one, the controls are different. On the GameCube, the A button jumps and the B button attacks. It feels natural on your fingers. On the Switch though, the A button jumps and Y attacks. It's not too weird or uncomfortable, it just sucks that you can't remap the buttons to the original layout. Or remap them at all. But whatever, we finally step outside and look at these colors! I really love the art direction they went with here. It's like an explosion of colors, like if you gave life to Skittles. Everything really stands out. SpongeBob, his pineapple, Squidward's tiki, it's a really nice enhancement. And hey, it's Mr. Krabs! SpongeBob! This flappin' robot crisis is making the Krusty Krab lose money like a sinking ship! Oh yeah, it's... <clears throat> Mr. Krabs. I forgot all about this. Clancy Brown, the actual voice actor for Mr. Krabs, wasn't available for recording lines for the original game, so they instead got whoever this guy is. Who is doing, I'm sure, his best. I've got a few golden spatulas that I'll be willing to trade to you for some of those shiny objects. Ahoy, SpongeBob! Arg, 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 arg. It's like if I did lines for this. Uncle Al, full-time funny guy on YouTube, does hilariously spot-on impressions of SpongeBob characters. Hey, Squidward. What do you want, Patrick? I was hoping to get myself some canned coochie. He even tweeted out to THQ Nordic saying he would gladly redo the lines free of charge. And gosh, I wish they took him up on that. What's wrong, Mr. Krabs? You don't look so good. You gotta help me, boy! The Krusty Krab's been overrun by a bunch of them hootlum robots of yours. You gotta help me, boy! The Krusty Krab's been overrun by a bunch of them hoodlum robots of yours! Anyway, let's head to Jellyfish Fields. As a kid, I played this world probably a thousand times. I know it better than bob on Battlefield. And... Ooh... That's not pretty. This game does not run too well on the Switch. You'll notice that during the preview portion of the level that so many environmental effects need to load. I was going to be upset, but while SpongeBob was talking to Squidward, he did the face! The thing! You know, the meme! So all is forgiven. Oh man, it's all coming back to me! While playing through my favorite intro stage in video game history, I was having mixed feelings. 
Again, this is because I'm on the Switch, but the frame rate on this thing can be pretty choppy. The controls aren't mapped in a super comfortable way, even though I'm using the GameCube, these wounds are all self-inflicted. And even though I'm only 20 minutes into the game, I did experience a handful of glitches. For example, during the bungee jump portion, you go down and collect a spatula and come right back up. After I did that though, Spongebob kinda glitched out, and was off-center and constantly tilted, clipping through the floor. He didn't control any differently, but it was still really distracting. I couldn't even fix this until Patrick came in and became playable. That being said though, the game is still really fun. Picking it up and playing after a decade plus of not playing it, it was like riding a bike. You never truly forget. It was so smooth. I was hopping around, spanking these robots like it was nothing. It all just came back to me and I was having so much fun. The game also does improve on a lot of things. For example, there's areas of the game that require Patrick to throw watermelons. In the GameCube, this was a pain in the bubble butt, because there was no way of being accurate. You just point Patrick in the general direction and hope for the best. Here though, they added in these little markers that'll show you where the watermelon will land. This is so helpful and makes the game less unnecessarily frustrating. And Sandy swinging around on her rodeo rope is fun. I mean, it's no Spider-Man on PS4, but it's still really satisfying. And that's something you gotta remember. The game still feels like a GameCube-era game. It's fairly simple and not too deep, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. Of course not! They even made the combat feel great! Now, when you attack a robot, the screen shakes a little bit, making every hit feel impactful and super satisfying. Oh, yeah, it's that sponge kid! Ugh, that's not satisfying. I'm honestly kind of mixed on how I feel about this game. Sure, a lot of it can come down to the fact that I got it on the Switch, and if I bought the game on literally any other platform, these problems wouldn't be here. But I didn't, so I'm giving it a review from the standpoint of the Switch. The Switch port isn't ideal. If you can, I definitely recommend getting it on the PS4, Xbox, PC, microwave, anything else! However, what if the Switch is your only option? Should you still get it? Yeah, 100%! I did have my nitpicks with the game, but that's only because I'm such a huge fan, and will notice the stupid tiny little things. The gameplay, atmosphere, and charm Battle for Bikini Bottom has transcends any small technical hiccups the Switch will give. I was glued to my TV, still having that childlike joy I had way back when I first played the original game. The core game is just as good as I remember. No nostalgia goggles here, just plain facts. The gameplay is solid, the visuals are charming, the dialogue warms any Spongebob fan's heart. Oh, and the multiplayer! How could I forget? This is a totally new feature created for the Rehydrated Edition. You and a friend pick a character and need to fight off robots. You platform from island to island, fighting off waves of enemies, collecting items, and ending it with a boss fight. I like this. It's very arcadey, and if you have a younger sibling that really wants to play with you, then this multiplayer mode definitely does its job. Just beating up robots with your friend or family. It's nice and wholesome. Overall, yeah, I absolutely recommend this game. If you cannot get it on the Switch, then get it literally anywhere else. It's fun, solid, and still holds up to the games of today. Also, Nickelodeon posted a picture of Spongebob on Pride Month which got people talking, so let's assess this. If you go inside Spongebob's room, we'll find that he has a picture of Sandy just hanging up. Well, 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 you naughty sponge. But also, there's this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels so much better. Anyway, I found some less than legal mobile games featuring Spongebob and friends that we're gonna check out. Are they any good? Well, you tell me! With a name like Spongy Family featuring two attempts at who I guess are Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, probably not. So we're walking in this trailer park, I guess as Spongebob if the silhouettes are to tell us anything. Find the key. Alright, well there it is. What do I do with it? Is it a car key? Do I want to escape? Because personally, I want to get out of here as fast as humanly possible. Uh... Yep. Yeah, I'm stuck, that's great. Get out of the car! Okay, great, we're free. And, oh wait, I apparently didn't even grab the key. I gotta physically select it? Okay, grab the key. The key. The key! The key. So we finally do that, open the door, and oh goodness! 
the game begins in this rundown abandoned house. The next level wants me to put a pin on a sofa for whatever reason. I don't know, I'm not gonna judge the bikini bottom culture. So maybe it's upstairs? I. Oh my god! Who lives in a crack house in southwest Detroit? Drug Bob Meth Pants? Holy fish paste, that was absolutely horrifying. So, I guess we're not playing as Spongebob, despite what these little icons are telling us. This is also a good time to mention the controls. They are terrible. I hate using virtual joysticks and buttons. They always feel weak and unresponsive. I know it's placebo, but when I have a physical controller in my hand, and I hold down right on the D-pad really, really hard, I feel like I'm moving a little bit faster. The camera is so busted here, I am swiping as fast and as hard as I can to the right to move the camera, and this is how fast it moves. It feels like the sensitivity is at a snail's pace. Like a, like a Gary's pace. So I put the pin on the sofa and just look at him. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'd rather not. So, the game has multiple levels, each level starting you outside, needing to collect the key, go inside, and do some random task, like stealing books and burning drug Bob's clothes. It is baffling to me that this game is still going. Around level 3, the house is rigged with security cameras, and every time you walk in its line of sight, you get to hear this. Which, yes, is very annoying. Oh, well look at Mr. Tough Guy over here. I'm just gonna pick up this trash can and... Great throw me. Alright, let's try this again, you little jerk. Yeah! He won't get up early. Uh, good. Okay, enough of that garbage. Let's move on to... To, uh... This. We got everyone's favorites, like Mr. Krabs, Plankton, Squadwart, Schmandy Schmeeks, and, uh, Kevin the Sea Cucumber Pre-Therapy. Oh, Neptune, that loading screen makes everything worse. No, no, man. This is the same exact thing as the last game, but now we're supposedly playing as Squad Weird. The first thing I did was try and find a character. Someone. Anyone. I wanted to see what these nightmares would look like close up and in person, but I couldn't find anyone. Seriously, I walked from creepy house to creepy house, broke into a couple of houses even, and couldn't find a single thing. There's even apparently collectibles, like Krabby Patties, energy drinks, and bear traps. I guess to stop all the sea bears. But no, I'm apparently in a place where I can be all alone. 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 Nah, but for real though, this is pretty boring. I'm not sure if this game, which is called Ocean Gang Neighbor, by the way, was made before or after Spongy Family, or if it's even made by the same people, but I'm not looking that up because I don't care enough. The weirdest thing I found, honestly, was a dining room on the second floor of the house. Who does this? There's no kitchen up here. Why bring all the food upstairs to this table? This is horrible. I would have played for longer to see if anything was gonna happen, but the game is littered with garbage ads that you can't skip. Every time I open a door, I swear some stupid ad would pop up. Ugh. Just go away. Nobody wants you ads. This next game technically says Epic Spacefall, but that isn't what it was called in the App Store. It was called Mr. and Mrs. Sponge Epic Run. Mother of Pearl. This is, uh, this is Fall, guys. I guess that kinda dates when this game came out. If you ever wanted to play Fall, guys, with literally nobody, then this game is for you. You gotta run and jump your way to the end, avoiding obstacles and making platforming jumps as they come along. It's actually not the worst thing I've ever played. SpongeBob's goofy ass in this game wears a fedora and is more rectangular. As well as... Is he... 
Is he dabbing when he jumps? That's absolutely what he's doing. I hate this game. Oh, 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 buddy. I guess I didn't expect your face to look like that. Who are you? Is this a VeggieTales character? There are so many lawsuits in this game waiting to happen. I mean, the controls are fine, but overall the game is just kind of pointless. The obstacles aren't crazy difficult or anything, and they're not supposed to be. The fun of Fall Guys comes from the fact that you're running and racing against a hundred other people and chaos ensues. Here, yeah, the balls are annoying, <laughs> but that's just because the game doesn't have super great controls. I don't know, man. Wow. What a title screen. This is Sponge Neighbor. Again, I swear this is like the fourth game with the word Sponge Neighbor in it. Oh god, it's a horror game. At least it's something different. I also wasn't given any objectives, so I guess I'll just walk around until I- HOLY MACROM! STOP STOP GET AWAY! Oh. Well that was easy. Yeah, that's right, don't mess with this! Oh what, you want some too, bud? I think I am the monster here. Even when I accidentally wandered off and backed myself into a corner, they were still no match for me and my flashlight of doom. Now, as fun as this is, I still don't have, like, an objective. I'm just walking around this surprisingly big campsite until I get ambushed by a sponge monster and need to watch an ad. We almost had something here, almost something kinda spooky, but instead it's just a comedic empty shell of a game. Smacking Spongebob in the face with the flashlight, though, is always hilarious. Sponge Glock Squarepants. A very, uh, serious game, as you can clearly tell. Uh, okay. <laughs> New objective, go to the Krusty Krab. Uh, meow, meow, okay. So this is a game of, uh, with Spongebob. And he has a gun. <laughs> and we're just gonna have to, uh, do deeds. I'm not gonna test the gun on Gary, I'm not an absolute monster. So, no, don't think I would ever do something like this. <laughs> oh my god, the game... It's set up like a battle for Bikini Bottom. <laughs> this overworld. Oh, this hurts even more. I guess we should test it. Uh, hello. Oh, you are horrifying. <laughs> oh, and there he goes. Loot him, why not? 30 cents, hey, that's pretty good. Oh, you are nightmare, who are you? They don't even hurt you. <laughs> they don't even hurt you, that's the worst part about it. I'm just, I'm just doing this for fun. Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, let's go to the Krusty Krab. You're, I, I don't like you. I never liked her in the show. All right. Let's go do some stuff for Mr. Krabs. Uh, arg me, boy. You know what day it is. Debt collecting day. I got a list of people I need you to have a chat with. <laughs> Don't let me down, boyo. Arg, 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 now get to work. Uh, go to Squidward's house and collect the overdue ketamine debt. Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> you are. It is your lucky day. Okay, so we're gonna go to Squidward's home. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stupidest game, but at the same time, it's weirdly nostalgic because it's like the battle- It's like the Battle for Bikini Bottom sequel we never got. Kick down! I'm coming in to collect the de This game has cutscenes. The red mist is coming. <laughs> the- Bro- Okay. I didn't expect this game to have cutscenes, let alone talk about the red mist. Oh my god. You okay? You don't look so good. Uh oh, don't do it, SpongeBob. We we're just here to collect the debt. We're not here to do it. Get our hands. Okay. Yeah, that's. Oh, no. <laughs> this game is oddly cinematic. I didn't. I expected a two-minute garbage game. But okay. Go to Patrick's house to collect his overdue drug money. Man, this is not what I signed up for. Hello, Patrick. Hey, careful where you point that thing! New objective, snap Patrick's neck. You wouldn't want to accidentally kill your best friend, but you just... Just don't look, Patrick. Just don't look. I'm sorry, buddy. It's all business. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
I got the mayonnaise. This is dark. This is awful. This is not the world of Bikini Bottom I've grown to love. Uh, what did it say? Go to Goo Lagoon, which is... According to Battle for Bikini Bottom, it was like back here? Yeah, oh man. But you really gotta play Battle for Bikini Bottom to really understand it. Who are you, by the way? Yeah, what are you looking at? <gasps> it's King Neptune! Who I cook the best of burgers! Oh my god, is he invincible? Well... Back to the sea you go! You're the ruler of the ocean, you can go back to it. Technically, though, we are underwater, so... I don't know what that has to do with anything. There he is! There's Larry! Oh, man, these guys got guns. Mm. Man, they are... They are horrifying. Spongebob, what's up? Steroid money? Mr. Krabs? I don't use steroids. These guns are 100% authentic, I swear. Uh... Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. I figured this would happen. Oh, man. <sighs> okay, that's fine. Mistakes were made, but listen, this isn't gonna go... Uh, you know... Without repercussions, so let's talk to let's talk to Larry and get a plan. Uh, they they didn't shoot until I shot at them, and there's n I can hide for cover here. Yeah, okay, we'll go. We'll hide for cover there. Okay, so, okay, Larry. Yes, yeah, so we need the steroid money. Excuse me. I'm just going to go right here, and okay, one, two, three, four. four no, no. Reload! Reload! Oh, man. That was a close one. How do I... Oh, my God. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, shoot up! No, man! Shady Shoals with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy? Oh, man. Okay. What, what can I say? The fry cook business ain't making too much money in this economy. We have to, uh... You know, get our money elsewhere. I'm sorry. For, I'll start with you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Oh, well, you're lucky. I don't know you. Can I uh, take this? No? Okay. Well, it's time to uh, say goodbye to our good friends, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Sorry. Sorry. Return to the Krusty Krab. Okay. <sighs> we really did just get that random... Uh, that random cutscene with Squidward and this creepypasta for no reason. Well, whatever, okay. Open up. I'm trying to, uh, get money here. Shut the door, laddie. That squirrel friend of yours. She's stealing me business. Thieving bilge rat. Execute her or I'll kill all you too. Oh, man. Kill Sandy in her meth lab to e Okay. To even it out. Okay. That's how that works. Alright, well, hey. Where's a witness? Sorry. Alright, Sandy, I'm sorry. You know I have a romantic subplot. Howdy, SpongeBob. Okay, hold on. What was that? Take... Oh, no. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. I should not have taken LSD. Oh, she's so scary. I'm so... I'm sorry. Incoming phone call. Ahoy, laddie. I've got reports that some narcs downtown need to be dealt with ASAP. While you're down there, I need you to get some funds out of me bank account forcefully. <sighs> All right. Is this gonna wear off? All right, thank goodness. That was very <laughs> scary. All right, so we gotta deal with some narcs and uh, go to the bank for good old Mr. Krabs. Mr. K himself. Is this a narc? You know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mr. Krabs was into this kind of business. You are horrifying. Oh, it's just people. All right, well... Let's be selective about this. Don't like you. Don't like you. You're okay. No, 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 what? You're not okay. Oh, I haven't been looting them. Eviction notice. Okay, okay drugs. <laughs> drugs everywhere. Hello? Hello, okay. You know, like I was saying, I don't think, uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if, uh, Mr. Krabs was into this business. He likes money. He likes, uh, not being super ethical to his, uh, works, uh, workers. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, put the money in the bag. <laughs> put it in! Sorry. 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Dude, you're so good at this. You're evading so well. Um. Did I get the money? Okay. My credit card. Lovely. Oh, man. Am I stuck? All right. Uh, I guess to- oh, that was nice, thank you. To Mr. Krabs as we go! I wish we had more cutscenes. If we're going to, uh, film me to judge your game, uh, oh, that's not how that works. That's not- that's what you get for being a ghost. If we're gonna judge this game off of a game and give my opinions, I'd say have some more cutscenes. That was- that GTA artistic style cutscene was very nice. Uh, is that the nasty patty? Yummy. All right, crabs. Give me one reason why I shouldn't just take you out too. The sweet smell of money. What? Hand it over, Sponge Boy, me Bob. Uh oh. Erg. So be it. I'll take you out too. All right. I have my finger on the mouse just in case. Me own employee. In me true form. What? Hold on. Your true form? Oh my God. That actually scared me. And the music. <laughs> His health is not going down. Am I missing a we- Oh my god, that scared the hell out of me! Your life isn't going down, Mr. Krabs! What are you doing? Oh my god, I am missing- Oh man, I am missing something. Oh, I oh, he charges you! These are bombs! Bro, this is way more than I was expecting! That- this is brilliant! Like, you actually created a boss battle! Like, this takes effort. This is not just shoot the- shoot crabs until his health goes down. Come on. Oh! Sorry! Oh, there we go. He's weakened. Oh, man, this is amazing! This is so fun! Oh, oh! Okay, he's got another one. Let's go, let's go. Get to the bomb. God, he's so scary. I hate crabs in real life. They look like- they're just- they are just giant spiders. They're just big sea spiders. And I hate spiders. I give no respect to spiders in the- uh-oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going. I love crabs, I love spiders. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Yeah, just kidding, stupid. Come over here. You're about to get yours. Do it. Come on! Yeah. Alright, last- last bit. Did I waste it? Am I supposed to- I don't know if these bombs respawn. I hope I have enough. I got two bombs here. I have a fully loaded clip. Oh, is this my last? Okay, there's two more. Come here. See what happens. Ooh! All right, that's fine. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Rest in peace, crabs. There we go. There's that anime cutscene we were looking for. Okay. So, Mr. Krabs laid to rest, as Spongebob stole all the money and the drugs. Ah, uh, with the oh my god. <laughs> this is so, like, GTA-like. You know, that's, I mean, I don't know why that's my go-to comparison. Wow. We did it. Just like that, we saved the world. We saved... <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this compilation of Spongebob videos I've made throughout the years. It's been a journey going back to them, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've really made it this far, then you're the real trooper. And I love you so much. You're my favorite. Don't tell anyone else, though.